Today we're going to look at probably the most common mistake that's made with SQL Server, and that's when you do an install and you realize, oh my god, I've selected the wrong collation. Now there's a couple of different options available to you. Um, one is to completely reinstall the instance. I do not recommend that as an option if you can avoid it. Um, and the others are to tell SQL to change the collation. Now, there are basically two methods I'm going to show you here. So first one is going to require us to stop the instance. In fact, the second one's also going to require us to stop the instance. So first of all, we stop the instance. Uh, find the installation uh, folder. Now, this is something that exists primarily in 2016, I know for certain, and onwards. But I believe you can also do it in 2005 and 2012 which is you can basically uh, use the setup.exe to rebuild the system databases. So what we're going to do is say, OK, we need the, the setup.exe. And we're going to tell it that we would like to change the following. So we're going to tell it uh, quiet action rebuild and the name of the instance, then who we want to be the local administrator. Uh, what else we're also going to add in the collation that we want to switch it to and we have the options here to also set the local SA password. Now since I prefer to use Windows authentication rather than SA I'm going to take that switch out. So I'm just going to get rid of that. And then we can run that as a command and what this will do is this will rebuild the system databases so the master, the model, the uh, MSDB and the tempdb, although technically the tempdb you don't need to really rebuild it because once the system databases or other system databases have changed the tempdb will get recreated on restarting the instance so it's kind of a the only one that doesn't really matter but it also will get changed anyway so uh, this takes several minutes to run obviously and when it's done it will spit out the other end that the system databases have been recreated now there is one or two little downsides to this um, obviously anything that you have in the master DB like what system uh, other than system databases I should say so what um, user databases are attached will no longer be attached simply because it doesn't remember them because it's a new system DB uh, same goes for SQL logins any SQL logins will be lost now keep in mind SQL logins not AD logins so if you've got an AD login and AD login is set on the database you just need to add the AD login back to the instance and you can connect perfectly normally you, you've lost no user permissions because it'll be remembered at the database level but the from the point of view of SQL logins because they're stored in the master DB and you just told it to rebuild uh, they're, they're gone bye bye and so unless you've created a backup of them first that's that's going to be a, a really painful exercise but a you shouldn't be using SQL logins anymore and B even if you were um, you do have the option to always export them before you'd run this process so you can just re-import them and there's a couple of scripts out there on the internet that'll let you do that so um, we're just going to go ahead and manually start up this instance. By the way, I noticed during the course of making this video that there is actually a little bit of a bug in Management Studio, so the reconnect doesn't work very well. But if I disconnect and reconnect within Management Studio, it does actually work. It just doesn't refresh for whatever reason. Maybe it's the buggy version of which I'm using here, but this instance does start up normally. Now, what we should be able to see is that the system collation now has changed to the one that we asked it. And ta-da, we have first way of changing system correlation. Now this took me, what, about three minutes, three minutes, 30 roughly to do. So it's not as bad as reinstalling, which can take 20 minutes minimum. So that's a, a quicker method. Let's say it's a quicker, not quick, but definitely quicker method. Now there is a second method, which we're going to explore here. So in this case, we're going to go to the SQL um, executable itself so this is stored in a slightly different place uh, so you've got the serve.exe so we're just going to find it just to prove that it's there and what we're going to do here is run from that directory a different set of commands so here we're just going to close this out because we don't need this right now and we're going to stop the service before we do that so again same principle you need to stop the service now this time the difference is instead of rebuilding the system databases from scratch we're going to tell it to change the collation of the system databases and this is done using a couple of switches and this can be done from command line so if we go ahead and uh, look for open a command prompt 
So we're just going to copy the path. So I don't have to manually type it out. We're going to run this as an administrator. So I'm just going to cd to this directory. And preferably I'm going to boost the size of the font here because obviously I don't think you'll be able to read it otherwise. All right, so we have a nice big command prompt here. So what we're going to do is we're going to say SQL serve dash M dash T 40 22 dash T 36 59 then dash S and give it provided the instance name and then dash Q and give it the collation. So what this does is basically it starts SQL server up in a single mode and allows it to then um, rebuild the system databases or change the system database collation, I should say, to what you've specified. Now, in this method, if you do have any user databases, I recommend detaching them first to save yourself some time, simply because it will try to reset all of the attached databases, not just the system ones, all of them. So user databases too. So if you don't want your user databases changed and or you just want to save some time, um, detach them first. That's the recommendation here. So here we're just going to go ahead and run this. Now this is a relatively straightforward process and everything's going to output to the console. And you can see it finished relatively quickly because we're just doing the system DBs. So I can now uh, press the control C to exit it and finish the process. But just want to scroll up so you can see that the starting process went through and then it changed the, the indexes um, for basically all of the system DBs. So there's no impact on anything else, just those. Hence it was so quick. Do you wish to shut down? Yes, I do. Thank you very much. So that's now stopped as a command line and we can go back to starting it as a service. Uh, we can also then go back to Management Studio. See that bug is still there. So we're going to disconnect and reconnect. Lovely. And yeah, yet another bug. <laughs> I wasn't using SA anyway, so that's fine. But hey, um, what we can do is quickly connect and check what the status of those system DBs are now. So no biggie here, we will just go ahead. Now, as you can see, uh, our instance is up and running. And if we check the collation, oh, look, we have the one we specified. Now, the most common case, which I probably should have mentioned at the beginning for doing this, is when you install a uh, non-case sensitive collation and then suddenly go, oh my God, my application requires collation with case sensitive. Or occasionally you have some weird and wonderful uh, app that uses some lovely binary collation or something else that you, you just didn't realize when you started and go, oh damn, and you don't want to reinstall. So hopefully you found this useful. If you did, you know what to do. If not, well, you also know what to do.